Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cole Anderson, the independent pianist. Uh, today we have another subtle and enigmatic masterwork by that most subtle and enigmatic of composers, the Catalan Federico Mampo. I have put a couple other things by Mampo on the channel already, so if you are intrigued by this music, go check those other things out as well. I'll link my Mampo playlist in the description box and put it at the end of the video as well. If you have been following my channel uh, regularly, you might notice that the piano sound is a little different in this video. I went for something a little more bright and pingy. You know, usually I really like a piano that has a kind of velvety, warm, slightly covered sound. But uh, for this recording, I found that that wasn't quite working for the kind of bell-like sounds that are uh, throughout these pieces. Bells were a constant feature of Mampo's sound world. Uh, his grandfather had owned a bell foundry in Barcelona, and Mampo even tried to revive this traditional family business at one time in his life. Anyway, let me know what you think of the, the different piano sound. I'd be interested in your comments, positive or negative, if you have insights. So this set, uh, Paisajes, means landscapes. Uh, are quite extraordinary. The first two pieces were written in the 1940s. Uh, this was immediately after Mampo had returned to his native Barcelona. He had been absent for a good 20 years, living and working in Paris. He was actually quite a popular figure in Paris. He was seen as a successor to Debussy and Satie, and he was accepted as a kind of honorary member of Les Six. Uh, Les Six, of course, was the famed group of musicians who were most influential in Parisian society at the time. Mampo was actually very shy, though, a very shy, retiring kind of person, and he found life in the city kind of trying. He had some early success as a composer, but he kind of dried up in the 1930s. He didn't publish any more music until his return to Barcelona in the 40s. Uh, coming back home seems to un have unleashed his creativity again, and he began embarking on a remarkable exploration of the outer reaches of music. Uh, that's oftentimes the way I think of his later music. It feels like he is reaching for the most distant stars, and at the same time, he's looking very deeply within himself, indeed. I feel certain that the landscapes referred to in the title for the first two pieces must be landscapes from his home. In fact, we know what the inspiration was for La Fuente y la Campana, the first piece in the set. This title literally means the fountain and the bell, and it was inspired by a gothic courtyard with a fountain uh, near the cathedral in Barcelona. It was a place that he visited with his future wife, the Catalan pianist Carmen Bravo. Uh, he met her at a competition she had played in Barcelona right after he came back in 1941. And in fact, this set is dedicated to her. This first piece starts with a remarkably evocative and moving melody. It's one of those melodies that sounds like it could be a folk song. As far as I know, it isn't. But... It isn't unusual for Mampo's music to straddle that divide. It's usually impossible to tell, for example, which of his canzoni danzas are original and which are pre-existing folk songs. We progress into a more abstract, visionary world with the second piece. The most extraordinary part is probably the middle section, which is written in an extremely free way, kind of like a cadenza, and it seems to depict the fluidity and play of light and shade, uh, typical of water. Words always seem a little bit uh, insufficient when talking about Mampo's music, so I won't uh, waste them trying to describe the indescribable, but the melody of the outer sections is incredible. It really goes straight to the heart. So, last but not least, we have probably the most enigmatic piece in the set, which is Caros de Galicia. 
This literally translates as Carts of Galicia. Uh, this was the late addition to the set. It wasn't uncommon, actually, for Mompo to collect pieces he wrote over many years into a single collection. So the famous Cancioni Danzas I just mentioned, those span a period of more than 50 years from the first piece to the last, but he collected them into one set later on. This one piece was written in uh, 1960, and it might be the most strange, as, as I mentioned. I was very confused, actually, when I translated the title to get Carts of Galicia. Um, I couldn't see for the life of me what this piece had to do with the music itself. Um, there's very little in the sound of it that would suggest something like the, uh, the ox cart of Mazorksky's pictures at an exhibition. So I began to wonder if it might be more of a symbol of some kind, if there were any hints to be found in the history of Galicia. Uh, it's interesting that Mampo even references Galicia, since I don't believe he ever visited there or lived there. He spent, as I mentioned, most of his life in Barcelona, with the exception of his time in Paris. Uh, what I did discover with a short search was quite fascinating. For background, uh, Galicia is a very rugged country in the far northwest corner of Spain, and it's uh, very rocky, hilly in the interior. Uh, apparently, animal husbandry and agriculture have been major sources of prosperity for Galicia throughout history. I then stumbled upon a very fascinating article written by Incarna Lorenzo, and I've linked the website in the description if you want to take a look at the original. Uh, she speaks about the integral place that the carro, the cart, had in Galician folklore and history. Apparently these kinds of carts were ubiquitous for farmers and used for many tasks. Uh, they have a very particular construction, and their axles make a very characteristic sound. They figure in many legends and stories of the region and are used prominently at religious festivals as well. Uh, Ms. Lorenzo then goes on to mention a book by Manuel Maria. I'm probably going to say this wrong. I think the title is Terra Cha. It was published in 1954. Uh, apparently, uh, I didn't know Manuel Maria before, but he was uh, apparently a great poet, a uh, Galician poet. He wrote in Galician. And inside this particular book, there is a poem uh, titled O Car. So actually referring directly to the carts of Galicia. I haven't actually read the book myself, but I did look at the poem, and uh, Ms. Lorenzo in this article wrote a beautiful kind of prose summary of the feelings encapsulated in the poem, and they so perfectly conjured up the emotions that the music gives me that I can't help but paraphrase them here for you. Hopefully I got all the meanings more or less correct. I can't be certain since my knowledge of Spanish is fairly limited, but uh, here goes. The man and the landscape are the protagonists, merging almost to the point of one being confused with the other. And alongside them is the cart, built of the wood of the trees that grow next to the paths through which the man travels. This cart accompanies the farmer through the hard labor of his life. The wooden axle of the cart makes a very particular sound that becomes one with the spirit of the man and of the land. In the times of plenty, as a bountiful harvest completes the uncertainty of another hard year, the song of the cart becomes that of a bird that fills all with joy. For the moment, all hardships melt away into peace. So a beautiful description, which I think perfectly conjures up the sense of kind of eternal magic that this piece has for me. So thank you to Encarna Lorenzo for this beautiful description. Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much by paraphrasing, paraphrasing it in English. So as I said, this seems exactly to sum it up the right mood. There's a strange kind of blending of distant melody with very hazy harmony, um, harsh dissonances at time, suggesting the odd sounds of the card along with the backdrop of difficult existence, and also the sense of oneness, fullness, a kind of quiet, mystical joy that is there in the final bars. Again, I actually find the sounds in this last piece to be very bell-like as well. Uh, I think at this point, though, Mampo was a little past trying to directly tone paint any one particular sound from nature. I think he was going for more of an internal state, an evocation of being. Now, I don't know if Mampo read this book. Uh, the timing is right, since it was published in 54 and the piece was written in 60. Uh, certainly, Mampo must have been familiar with the importance placed on the Galician carts in the folklore of the area to use this exact phrase. Uh, Mampo had a lifelong interest in digging deep into the wellsprings of legend and humanity, going straight to the center of our beings, in fact. And he used this sense of legend and what could be called musical primitivism, or maybe minimalism might be another term, 
uh, to accomplish this task. So please let me know what your thoughts are uh, on this set, or if you have any other direct information about Mampo's inspirations for these kind of mysterious pieces. I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Also, please consider becoming a financial supporter of the channel if you can. But there's a number of ways to do that. I have them all linked in the description box. One simple way is to visit www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist, where you can sign up for monthly pledges. And any amount is very helpful to me uh, bringing you this content. But for now, uh, please just enjoy the complete performance coming up and stay tuned next week. I'll have some more conversation or great music for you. Until then, take care. <laughs>